Susan Kennedy of Pretty Peaceful. This is the view from the top of my neighborhood in the San Juan Mountains in southwest Colorado just after the sunset. Let's go back to my house in that little valley back there so I can show you part two of the Cactus Garden Blanket. Thank you for joining us for the Cactus Garden Blanket Crochet Along. This video will cover part two of the pattern. You can download the Cactus Garden Blanket Crochet Pattern from Ravelry.com. You can also find the pattern PDF in our Crochet Along group on Facebook called Pretty Peaceful People. If you're not a member of our group yet, please join. It's been so helpful, people sharing tips and different techniques and posting their own videos um, and helping out people that have been stuck and also just giving some great ideas for color combinations. So please join the group if you haven't already. And thank you to everybody that has liked or, post or posted or commented in our group. Um, it's been really awesome. I'm, I'm so happy. So if you haven't seen the part one tutorial video, you can click on the P Pretty Peaceful YouTube channel and see part one. This is my small blanket after part one of the pattern. So the... Small blanket and the large blanket are the two sizes we're working with here for the Cactus Garden Blanket Crochet Pattern. And in part one of the pattern, we went to row 62 for the small blanket and row 122 for the large blanket. Part two is going to cover the center section of the blanket from here to here for the small. And it's going to cover this center section of the blanket from here to here for the large. The center section of the small and the large are the same. For part one, the small was um, half as tall, um, but these are gonna match for part two. It's the central, central motif here that I think looks kind of like a cactus, that cool diamond pattern. So this is what we're gonna be covering today for the small and the large. Um, I also wanna mention if you chose to do a medium, these are some different medium size options. You can find this file in um, the files of our uh, crochet long group on Facebook, Pretty Peaceful People. And if you're doing either this option or this option over here, same part two. The only one that's gonna be a little different is if you chose this option here in the middle where you're just gonna repeat the part two rows one time instead of twice for the rest of these blankets. So, after part one, your small blanket will look like this. My blanket hopefully matches the chart here. And the large blanket will be twice as tall. This is what your large blanket would look like after part one. And now we will move on to part two. Very briefly before I show you part two, I want to show you a fun little project I did over the weekend. That is a, a fun use for your scraps. And I made a little cactus garden blanket pillow just doing one pattern repeat of part one, and I used velvet, it's just delicious to pet. Uh, my boys have been bickering over who gets to use this pillow uh, all day yesterday since I made it, and I put a little faux fur back um, just for fun. But um, you can find information about this pillow in our Facebook group, or you can just um, follow the part one pattern and just do one pattern repeat. So this is 68 stitches across, just one pattern repeat. And I started a second pillow here in a different color using my peacock scraps from my large cactus garden blanket. Now it's upside down here. And I'll try to put, put this pattern up pretty soon too. This is just over halfway done and it'll have a diamond in the center. So I'll try to post this chart on Ravelry and in our Facebook group as soon as I can. But that's just a fun little use for your scraps. Each of these uh, Rose just uses a tiny amount of yarn, so that's fun. So let's talk about the part two pattern. Part two continues the same mosaic crochet technique as part one. All the single crochet stitches are in the back loop only, except for that first and last stitch of each row that go through both loops. Um, and we're only using one color of yarn per row. All the odd rows are yarn A and all even rows are yarn B, the background yarn. And let's take a look at part two. First I wanna show you the big charts here so we can get an overall idea of what we're doing. So here's the small blanket 
And here's the large blanket chart. This is what it's going to look like after part two. So part two of the small blanket will go to right here, one, row 181. So part two is covering from here to here. And for the large blanket, it's this upper section here. And you'll see we have this kind of subdivided into smaller charts. And I didn't mark it here, but I should have. So instead of doing one big chart um, for each half of the small blanket here, we, we're using a smaller chart that's repeating more frequently. That's how we're getting that cool diamond pattern. So this um, chart right here, I'm calling chart A. This is chart A repeated again. This is chart B, and this is chart B repeated again. So, same thing over here. For the large blanket, you're gonna work chart A, work chart A, work chart A, work chart A. Then we're gonna work chart B four times for the second half of the blanket. And then we're just gonna repeat the same thing. So, that's, that may be a little bit confusing, but don't worry, don't worry. Let's slow down and take a look at what's going on here. <clears throat> These are our two charts for the part two pattern. So here's chart A, and here's chart B. So each of them are a little bit smaller, half the size of the, the chart we had for part one. And we're going to repeat this chart twice for the small blanket or four times for the large blanket. And then we're gonna move on to chart B, twice for the small blanket or four times for the large blanket per row. So in the written directions, um, I have two little areas in parentheses that represent this chart. So this one is A, and this area in parentheses is chart B. So you're gonna repeat that one um, basically twice for the small blanket or three times for the large blanket. Or you're going to repeat this one <clears throat> after that. So let's jump in and start a row here, and you can watch me do it, and hopefully everything that I just said will make sense. <laughs> so part one of the small blanket left off on row 62, which was a yarn B background yarn row. So we're going to start part two at row 63, and if you're working the large blanket, you will start part two at row 123. So I'm gonna grab my, we're going back to yarn A. This is my kind of colorful yarn of my mandala scraps I'm using here. I'm gonna zoom in a bit so we can see what I'm doing here. Attaching my yarn with a slip knot to my hook and I'm gonna attach it to this first stitch. Let me see if I can zoom in even more here. Attach it to the first stitch with a slip stitch. And then chain one, single crochet through both loops of that same stitch, single crochet through the back loops only of the next stitch. That's how every row starts for the whole blanket, all the parts. So, that's our first two SC here. Next, we are going to double four DC. And this is gonna be four double crochets through the front loop only, just like part one. And on our chart A, this is these first four, our first two X's. Remember each stitch on the, each X on the chart, is two double crochet stitches. So these are our four double crochets. We're gonna start here. And just like in part one, we are doing our double crochet stitches into the row two rows below, into our previous yarn A row. So we will double crochet one, double crochet two, 
double crochet three and double crochet four. All right, what is next on our pattern and chart here? Next we have 10 SC, 10 single crochets, and that is represented by this group of five white boxes. Each white box on the chart is two single crochet stitches through the back loop only. So we will work one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I forgot to mention, um, part two of your blanket is where you may want to change colors. For the small blanket here, I'm doing eight rows of each of my colors, eight yarn A rows. So that's 16 rows overall, counting the even yarn B rows. But in the large blanket in my in my photos, I that, uh, the first row of part two, row 123, that is where I switched from using the known colorway of Lion Brand Mandala to the Peacock colorway. So part two is a good, good place to change if you want to kind of switch it up. So we've done our 10 single crochet here. Now we have another six double crochets represented by these three X's here. So we will double crochet down to the front loop only. And just like in part one, this block of six double crochets is gonna overlap the group below it by two stitches. One. No, oh, what happened here? <laughs> two. Three, four, five, and six. Okay, let's take a look at what is next for part A here. We finished those six double crochet stitches. Now we're going to do 10 SC, 10 single crochet through the back loop only, represented by those five white boxes in the chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. <clears throat> the last little bit for the chart A that we're going to repeat here is two double crochet stitches. The last little X representing two double crochet stitches through the back loop. So, I mean through the front loop only, I'm sorry. One and two. Now, I wish I had shown you this for the part one video um, to place a marker after each pattern repeat. So we've just finished one repeat of chart A, and I'm gonna place a marker in this stitch so we don't lose our spot, and that'll make it easier to count so we don't have to count eight different repeats. You can just count from the last stitch marker. It'll be a little bit faster. So I'm gonna use good old safety pin and mark this last stitch of our first chart A repeat. And now we're gonna repeat the section between the two asterisks. So from here to here, once more for the small blanket. And I'm making a small, so I'm only gonna do one more time. So we're gonna start at the asterisk and make four more double crochets. This 4DC, and that is this, these two X's here. So four double crochets. One. Two. Three and four. 
So we have six double crochets right there where the end of the first part A chart ended and the next repeat of the part A chart begins. You'll have a group of six. Next we will single crochet into the back loop only of the next 10 stitches and that is represented by these five X's on the chart. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. So here's where you might might say, hmm, this doesn't look right. We're not gonna get an overlap here. Don't worry, this is how it's supposed to look like for part two. This first row, and we're getting started on part two, we are not gonna have that overlap for all these groups. We did have the overlap over here, overlapping by two stitches, but this is going to look really wrong. It's going to feel really wrong here to not overlap for our next group of double crochets, but this is how the pattern is, and it's good for your brain to change it up a little bit. <laughs> keep, keep all your uh, neurons making new correct connections here, and kind of break out of that muscle memory every once in a while. So next we will have six double crochets represented by these three X's in the middle, two double crochet stitches through the front loop only of the row two rows below. So this is going to feel wrong, but just go with it, follow the pattern. It's kind of a little, uh-oh, what's going on? But we're really setting the pattern for the rest of part two here. So it will make sense after this. It's just this first row and Maybe a couple more rows with a different overlap than part one. So there's four, five, and six. So we have our first repeat ended here. Now we're starting here. We've got four double crochets, joined those two to make a group of six. 10 single crochets, and then six more double crochets. And let's take a look at our pattern, and see what's next. Now we have the next 10 single crochets represented by these five white blocks. So let's do those. Again, we're not going to have that overlap. This is <clears throat> a good surprise for your brain. Keep you guessing just when you got comfortable. And the final thing to repeat for our chart A here is two double crochets, the last X in our chart. So we have one and two. And now we finish the second repeat of chart A. <clears throat> I'm going to add a stitch marker in this stitch. So we can keep track of where we are. So let me zoom out here. So far we have worked chart A twice because I'm making the small blanket here. One repeat and the second repeat. Now, if you're doing the large, you'll do this over again. Two more repeats of chart A. And now we will move on to working chart B. Zoom back in. So for the second half of row 123, we will move on to the second 
set of parentheses, which is corresponds to chart B. So first we're going to work two double crochets, which is represented by this first X in row 123. Sorry. One, and two. I like it keeps slipping off my board here. <laughs> okay. Next, we will repeat. We will work ten single crochets, and on the chart that is represented by these five white boxes on row one twenty-three. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Next we have six double crochets through the front loop only of two, row two, two rows below, represented by those three X's on our row 123 chart B. One, two, three, <clears throat> Four, five, and six. No overlap, uh-oh. Don't worry, we're doing it right. Okay. Next, we have 10 single crochets represented by these five white boxes in the chart. I forgot to mention, if you are left-handed, you will be uh, working from left to right. You could, you'll be working chart B before chart A, kind of opposite order. And I have that written down in the pattern notes. I just didn't um, mention it before. So let's see, we've got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 single crochets. And finally, our last little part of chart B here, four double crochet stitches. And that is these last two X's on chart B. One, two, three, Okay, so that was our last stitch for chart B, so our first time through chart B. So I'm going to place a stitch marker in this last stitch. So we can keep track of where we are. And for our small blanket, we just have to work chart B one more time. So we will repeat the section between the double asterisks once more for the small blanket or three more times for the large. So we're just going back to the double asterisk here and we're going to work from here to here one more time. So we will start at this two double crochets, that little box there. One and two. Next we have 10 single crochets represented by these five white boxes on the chart. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we have six double crochets, these three X's here. Now here we do have that little overlap, just like on the other end. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next we have 10 single crochets. These five stitches right here, five white blocks, two stitches each. four double crochet through the front loop only, these two X's here. Last two stitches that end each row, single crochet through the back loop only, single crochet through both loops. And that is represented on this pattern just by the, the 2SC here. I'm not taking up so much space in the pattern writing back loop only in both loops every time. By now, after 123 rows or 63 rows, you're used to it. So now we will cut our yarn and fasten off. And I'm leaving quite long tails on my small blanket here, about 8 to 10 inches, so I can show you the fringe option here on this one. So let's zoom back out and take a look at our blanket so far. We have one, two, three, four sections between our stitch markers. These two sections were chart A, and the second two sections are chart B. So all together they're gonna meet up and create that cool diamond pattern where everything's pointing toward the center. That's how we achieve that effect and have kind of an easy repeat. So the next thing to do is to move on to row 124, which is the same as row two. Same as all even rows. We are going to grab our yarn B background yarn. And I've been kind of using this neutral colored yarn here for my yarn B. Uh, maybe I'll grab the other end though. <laughs> okay, let's zoom back in. And I'm going to attach the yarn to my hook with a slip knot. Attach it to the end here with a slip stitch, my first stitch, going right through that first double crochet stitch of row 123. Oh, and I forgot to mention, <laughs> I think I keep saying row 23, but I, 123, but I'm actually on row 63 for the small. So I'm starting row 64 for my small. I'm going to attach the yarn with the slip stitch here. Chain one, the chain one never counts as a stitch. Single crochet through both loops. Single crochet through the back loop only of the next one. 
And I'm going to continue to single crochet in the back loop only all along the row until I get to that last stitch where I'll crochet through both loops and then fasten off. And I will see you back here in a minute to show you how to do row 65 of the small blanket, which is the same as row 125 of the large blanket. Okay, so I finished row 64 of my small blanket, which is the same as row 124 of the large. And it's all single crochet through the back loops only, except for that first stitch and the last stitch. And I just kept my stitch markers where they are, but I moved them to the front loop only of that row. We'll just move these up as we go. So let's get started with row 125, or row 65 for the small. And I'm going to use my favorite highlighter tape to kind of zoom in on the area we are working with here on the pattern so we can keep track. Just row 125 between the pink lines here. And cover up 123 that we already did. And zoom in on our chart, row 125. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is those first two starting single crochet stitches and we're going to switch back to our yarn A which in my case I think this is the last row of this kind of rusty red color for me. So I'm going to attach the yarn to my hook with a slip knot, attach it to this first single crochet stitch The slip stitch, chain one, single crochet through both loops of that same stitch, and then single crochet through the back loop only here. That's our two single crochets. Now we have two more single crochets to begin our chart A. Here, that first, sorry. The first white box of our chart corresponding to these two single crochets of first stitches for chart A. One and two. Now we'll go back to the pattern here, row 125. We're going to do six double crochets represented by these three X's, two stitches each, and we'll have a little overlap here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Next thing for row 25 is 10 single crochets, represented over here by chart A, one, two, three, four, five white boxes. crazy with all this tape here now. <laughs> okay, next we have six double crochets represented by these three X's on chart A. One, 
two, three, four, five, and six. And the last part of chart A for our first repeat is eight single crochet stitches. And on the chart, that is these four white boxes, chart A. Seven and eight. And if you did it right, you should see your stitch marker from the last row just below there. So let's move that up. And to make it easier, I'm just going to put it in the front loop only of that last stitch. So that's the end of our first work through of chart A. Now we're back on row 125. We will repeat the section between the two asterisks again. So we go back over here to the two single crochets. And we're going back to chart A to this first box here. So we'll have two single crochets here. One and two. Now we're working this repeat chart A second time over. We're going to work six double crochet stitches. That is these three X's on chart A over here. Again, it's going to look weird here. It's, it's going to look like it's not lining up. It's not symmetrical. This is just beginning of part two. It's good to keep your keep you on your toes. Challenge yourself a little bit. So that's three, four, five, and six. Back to row 125. 10 single crochet stitches. These five white boxes of the chart A. Back to row 125, the next thing we'll do is six double crochets. And that on chart A up here, that is these three X's. One, two, three, four, five. And finally, we have eight single crochets represented by these last four white boxes on chart A. above our stitch marker here so I'm going to move our stitch marker up and I'm going to put it just through the front loops only that way we when we do our next row we can work through the back loop only of that stitch without having to move the stitch marker okay so 
So far we have our two repeats of part A chart here. First repeat here, second repeat here to this marker. Now we're at the halfway point of the blanket and we switch over to chart B. So for row 125, we've repeated the section between the two asterisks once for the small blanket. If you're doing the large, you'll do two more times. Two more repeats, and now we'll start in with the chart B. So the first direction for chart B is eight single crochets. And for row 125, that is represented by these four white boxes here. those ASC. Now we're going to do six double crochets through the back loops only, represented by these three X's. Now we'll continue with our chart B, 10 single crochets, and that's represented by these five white boxes. Next direction is six double crochets represented by these three X's here on chart B. So you see, now that we've started part two, we are getting um, overlapping by two again. It's just that first row of part two that kind of is a little bit of a surprise for you. Oops, let's see, what is next? The last little part of row 125 is two single crochets represented by this last white box here. And that will bring us right back to our stitch marker. One and two. And the two should be right above where your stitch marker is. I'm gonna move my stitch marker up to mark the end of that repeat of chart B. And let's go on with our last repeat of chart B for the row. So we finished the two single crochets. Now we are going to repeat the section between the double asterisks. So we're not going all the way back to the top of the row. We're just starting chart B again from the double asterisk. So we're starting with eight single crochets. These first four um, eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. So we did our eight single crochets. Now we're gonna do the six double crochets. And that is represented by these three X's here. pattern for row 125. We will continue chart B with 10 single crochets represented by these five white boxes on chart B. Now these charts aren't symmetrical like they were from part one so they're really meant to be uh, read from right to left and if you're a left-hander just start with chart B and uh, work that as many times as needed for your size, then move to chart A, but you should still read the charts from right to left. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Back to row 125 slash 65 here. I'm going to work six double crochets represented by these three X's on our chart B. stitches to go here. The last part of chart B to repeat is these two single crochet stitches here, represented by this last box on chart B. So we'll do our two single crochet stitches through the back loops only, one, two, and then we're going to do the last two stitches of the row, these two SC here kind of our little border stitches, which are not shown in the charts. One, and the last one is through both loops. And we'll cut our yarn and fasten off. And there we have row 65 of my small blanket, which would be row 125 of the large blanket. I'm gonna zoom out and let's kind of take a look at what's going on. It's really easy to doubt yourself on this beginning of part two just because things are a little different that's what makes the pattern fun though so right kind of in the center of this diamond you've got a little line going off this way and then in the center of this little diamond you'll have a little line going off that way that is the beginning of our little arrow patterns that are gonna point toward the center so <laughs> Looks a little different. Just use some stitch markers to keep track of where you are. Follow along. If you have a question, please post it in our Facebook group. You'll get a really quick response. There are people all over the world in our group in various time zones who are awake possibly at the same time as you and trying to figure out the same thing too. And if you post a question or a problem, that's gonna help everybody else who may be struggling with that same section or just questioning themselves on that same section. Or if you're rocking it, please let us show, uh, see your magnificent blanket because we got some people really rocking this one. Very neat stitches. So thank you so much for watching. The rest of part two, you'll just continue in this same way, repeating chart A, either two, um, working chart A either twice or four times, depending on if you're doing the small or the large. If you're doing the medium, you'll work chart A three times, then work chart B three times. 
Um, if you're doing larger blankets, you'll repeat them more. But it's always chart A on the first half of your blanket, chart B on the second half of your blanket. And I guess I'll see you back here in part three. Thank you so much for watching.